Hi guys, so today I'm going to be upgrading the memory on this T7910 workstation that's going to be my new workstation once everything gets assembled. So I picked up a whole bunch of DDR4 registered DIMMs and there are uh, 16 modules here, each being 16 gigabytes. So that gives me a total of 256 gigabytes. And so I'm really going to enjoy that because my current workstation is um, maxed out at 32 gigabytes. And sometimes I just need more. And so I've had to resort to adding swap files and stuff like that. So um, I'm really looking forward to getting these in here and getting this system to replace my current workstation. All right, so let's get started and open up the case. Okay, so the memory in the system are under these uh, air channels here. So to open these up, you press on these two blue uh, buttons on the side here, and then you can pivot up. This side is uh, attached to the chassis, don't, so don't try to pull it up from this side. You're gonna have to pivot. So just like that, and then pull it out of the little hole where this tab sticks in, and that's where it pivots off of. We'll do the same to the other side here. Okay, so right now, in order for me to test the system and the CPU upgrade and all the other stuff, because I bought this machine refurbished, I wasn't really sure if everything was working, so I only have two modules in here right now that are from my testing batch. So that's gonna go back to the lab. So let me go ahead and take those out. So now that I know the CPUs work, uh, most of the things I've tested on the motherboard so far have worked and haven't given me any problems. So this is getting closer to being ready. All right, so those are out and I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of open up all the dim slots, pull back all the levers. Okay. So one thing to note is that these uh, attachments, or I don't know what you really call this thing, but it, it basically attaches to the metal frame here where the fans are, and it allows you to attach those memory air channels. If these kind of get in the way because they do kind of cover the you know part of the dim slot on this side if they get in the way and you're having a hard time you can remove them so for example with this one there's this black plastic latch here so if you pull this forward and move, pull up these do come out and so that gives you a little bit more clearance now i usually don't have a problem uh, with this while installing memory sometimes i do have a problem when I'm trying to remove memory and I need to get in there to remove the RAM modules. So let me go ahead and put this back because I think I'll be just fine. Okay, so that's back where it belongs. And all right, let's go start with uh, this kit here. So. that up oh and by the way before I start installing these things just for anybody who doesn't know this is a Haswell uh, Broadwell architecture and it supports both the v3 and v4 Xeon uh, processors and those have a integrated memory controller that supports quad channel or four channels. And so you'll see these, these memory slots, the eight memory slots around this socket are connected to this processor, while the other eight are connected to the second processor. So keep that in mind. I think it's fairly obvious, but in case you know, you're not used to a dual socket system, if you don't have the second processor, these DIMM slots that are associated with the second processor will not be uh, functional. So now I said this is a, a supports quad channel. So you'll see that there are eight slots 
and or dim slots and there's there's labels on the board if you read them I don't think you'll be able to see it in the camera but the white the ones with the white lovers this those are the basically the first dim of the channel so this would be let's see here yeah this would be dim one and so this is these this would be the first dim of this channel now this the one next to it is the second dim for that channel so you can have two dims per channel or it's called dpc dims per channel you can have two dims per channel but remember when you do that uh, oftentimes that means it's going to run slightly slower as well but anyway uh, there are two dims per channel and you usually have to populate the first dim in that channel first and so if I'm today I'm going to be fully populating all dims so it doesn't really matter I'm just gonna throw all the dims in but if you were for example doing only four dims you would want to spread that out across the channel so you'd probably just po populate the white dims so you do one on the first channel you would do uh, one on the second channel and then another one on the third channel and then another one on the fourth channel and you'll notice how it kind of alternates back and forth so the first channel is here second channel is here third channel is here and fourth channel is here okay all right so let's go ahead and get started so when I'm installing a lot of RAM modules like this so there's gonna be a total of 16 today right I like to just kind of lay them down first. Make sure that they're in the slots correctly. I'm not going to fully seat them down yet. I just want to make sure that the notch, for example, is in the right position and that the dims are in the, the slots at the ends. And you can kind of hear a little bit of creaking there when you do that. That's the pin, the making, uh, the dim making contact with the pins, making that sound. So that's that's okay. That's not a problem. Yeah. So this last dim here is really really close in here. So as you can see, when this is fully uh, seated and installed, trying to get to the levers uh, behind this uh, piece is can be difficult. I mean, you can still get in there, but it is a little bit difficult. So sometimes you do have to remove these if you have really, really big hands or something like that. All right, so that's done for channel one and channel three. And you'll also notice that, let me take one of these out and show you. These have to go in a certain orientation. That's why there's a notch in the middle. That's not really exactly in the middle. It's a little bit offset to the side, and that prevents you from installing it in the wrong direction. Now, all these dims on this side are basically facing this way, but all the dims on the opposite side, you have to turn them around, and they're going to be facing this way. So just keep that in mind if you're having problems getting the dim seated in. You know, take another look. You might have the dim facing the wrong way and so that notch is not fitting in the dim socket. All right, so those dims are now in place. They're not fully seated down yet, but I just want to make sure that they're in place. All right, and so now we're going to just go ahead and apply even pressure on the dim all the way down until the lever uh, clicks. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see this in the, in the camera, but with DDR4, the middle pins here are a little bit longer. And so the dim isn't exactly straight. There's kind of this bulge in the middle. And I don't know the official reasoning for that, but I suspect that basically it aids in installing the memory. One of the things that I, I used to encounter problems with is, with, especially with DDR3, where the dims are completely straight. When you install these, sometimes they don't get recognized correctly in the system, and you have to kind of press down on the middle a little bit to apply more pressure to get them fully seated in. So I suspect that DDR4 
uh, change the design physically a little bit to aid in installation. Now, if somebody, by the way, if one of you guys watching this know the official reason, and if, if my guess or speculation is correct about that, let me know, because I'm really just kind of speculating about that, because I remember having a lot of problems installing DDR3 DIMMs, especially on servers with a lot of memory modules. It was almost guaranteed if I had, you know, um, 16 or 32 modules to install, there would always be some problem, and I have to go back and remove a couple of modules to narrow down which one was the problem. So that was fairly common for me. Now one technique somebody showed me once to kind of work around that problem, especially with DDR3, and it's not so much a problem with DDR4, was after you press down on DIM module, so I'm gonna go ahead and press down on that, on the two sides, and you'll, the levers are now, um, or the, the latches are fully engaged on that DIM right now. After you do that, you press down on the middle part and you kind of wiggle it like this a little bit. So wiggle it in this direction, not by much, just a little bit, and that will help ensure that the dim is fully seated. And since I'd started doing that, I drastically decrease my chances of having uh, memory installation problems. So that's just a tip to share with you guys to pass along that I, I picked up from somebody else. Okay, so we're just going to head and Okay, and just checking that the latches here are fully engaged, and they appear to be. And so I'll go ahead and press down on the middle, wiggle it up and down a little bit. All right, so that's good to go. Let's go ahead and do So that's done. Now we'll take out the second batch of DIMMs. And then we'll repeat the same process for the second processor. So th these dims are much easier to deal with because you don't have the stuff that kind of getting in the way. All right, so those are done. All right, so I'm ready to fully seat them down now. Again, just applying even pressure from both uh, left and right sides. Okay, and then just check that the latches are fully engaged. And then I'll press down on the middle and kind of wiggle it up and down a little bit. All right, that's done. Let's do the same remaining four. Again, just press down a little bit more on the middle of the dim and just wiggle it up and down a little bit. Okay, so all the dims are now installed. And let's go ahead and put these uh, memory air channels or air shrouds or whatever you want to call them back in. And so remember that the two are different. The one with this thing sticking out goes on the side where the PCI slots are. And you have to in install this tab in the hole on the case first. And then pivot down. And as it goes over this plastic piece, and you press all the way down, it just kind of snaps in, right? And take extra care, when you've got a lot of DIMMs installed, 
you know, these, um, the plastic comes really close to the dims. And so if you feel some resistance where maybe the plastic is hitting the dim and something's out of alignment or something like that, don't press down on these because you could end up scratching the dim and breaking off some components and damaging your memory. So just go easy on it. You know, if you feel some resistance or something's catching, something's not aligning correctly, don't force it down because that will be a sad day for your memory modules. Okay, all right, so that's all there is to it. I'll turn this on in a little bit and make sure that everything uh, fires up and all the memory modules are recognized, but I'm pretty sure it should be good to go. Those modules were tested in another system, so I'm pretty sure it should be good to go. All right, so hopefully for anybody who wants to upgrade the memory on their T7910, I hope uh, this video will be useful to you. And uh, if you liked it, please uh, hit the like for me and uh, subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos. All right, thanks a lot, bye-bye.